Oh my. This just got dropped off. What is that? Oh, I thought it was one of the flying saucer blow up things. Oh, I forgot. I forgot. KFC's coming. <laughs> What's here? I was at the front door like. I like, forgot to tell you guys. Like, this is not for us. But it said BNC MAP. I like, forgot oh. to tell you we're doing um, KFC potato yeah, smash bowl. It's like a loaded potato smash bowl. Yeah, we're doing potato smash bowl. They reached out to me due to it being mashed potatoes and fries. Oh my god. Oh my god. I said just bring it over to this dude. Oh my god. Perfect. Oh my god. I'm I'll have a nug. I'll have a nug. <laughs>
Potatoes are not bad for you on God. Like, that's a God-given fact. Uh-huh. It's just like, sorry, I want to try No, da- get a nugget. <laughs> really make sure you get a nugget with all the fixings, too. Yeah. Obviously. Okay. Wow. The last time I was at KFC wow. was every Thanksgiving when I get invited to Friendsgivings. I, I just go there and get their potatoes and I get a nice ramekin from like Walmart. Ramekin. Like a circular dish. That's a crazy word to know. Ramekin. Ramekin feels like like, like a, a man that that has been around the block and he knows a spell or two. You've seen these It does bowls. seem spell adjacent. The small I've seen white bowls. Ramekin. That's just a bowl. It's a ramekin bowl. It's a white bowl. Oh, the souffle bowls? Yeah. Yeah, that's a souffle bowl. I mean, it says ramekin bowl. By deaf. Yeah. By deaf, it's a souffle bowl. You know what word I can't stop saying? Like, actually, I'm kind of mad that I just remember that I... This word has been playing in my head. As soon as I stop saying this word, it comes again. A maglamation. Ooh. A maglamation. A maglamation. Wait, I, have we talked about this word? I don't I don't know. Wait, let me try and remember what that means. Okay, let me itch something. What specifically? My cheek. <laughs> Go ahead. A maglamation means... Okay, I don't know. I'm thinking like apparition, but that's not true. Okay, I don't know what it means either. No, it's like... I, I'm thinking it's like you, no, something that builds up. It's a build up of something. A maglamation. It's... A, what does it mean? Am exactly? I gonna be wrong? It sounds like a church thing. It too. sounds like a, look. Yeah. The action process or result of combining. Yes. Or uniting. Combining and uniting. So kind of like a build up. We're an amalgamation. Yeah. Like as uh, this podcast. Yeah. Well, the, every all the listeners are like an amalgamation of, of mappers. And C, make B and C. Amalgamapper. Amalgamate to B and C. B and C. Brooke and Connor like, make an amalgamation. No, Brooke and Connor amalgamate to form a podcast. <laughs> the quick brown fox amalgamates all over Brooke and Connor. Yeah. <laughs> My. Please. Happy first yes. day. Oh. What? Wait, do you want to keep going on no. that? No. Welcome back to Brooke and Connor make a podcast. So excited to be back. Happy first day of. No rain, and I don't even remember a time when it was when it wasn't raining. I have, I will say, like I love the rain. I love the coziness of it. I love the vibe. This was not that. This was not that for anybody. It was across the board. It was the great flood. This was depression raining from the skies, and then osmosising into my body. Oh, and it happened to me too. And that was the first time we both been depressed at the same I couldn't, time. I couldn't. I could not get dressed this morning and slept through my alarm. Did you also feel like, like maybe? you were sick as well but it was just like my bones hurt yeah no i was like oh i'm finally dying it's finally happening no that was like truly unbelievable it was horrible and it was literally like it was weird because also my also max was depressed yeah by proxy because he can't go out as much but like he doesn't give a shit about the rain yeah he'll go out and get soaked and i know it sounds like we're being like puss no but no like i grew up on the east coast loved the rain rained all the time there it was completely fine this wasn't that this was the the great this Let's was get, the great flood like this was the great n- negative flood of connotation i'm and i'm still like ho- horribly depressed people died really we're not yeah i'm sure somewhere the, there were there were mud, horrible mudslides and such. That's what I'm saying. It was not anything to not write home about. You should people were writing home about it, and as they should. Literally, it lasted forever. And I don't know what the phenomena is with phenomenon is with L.A. specifically, but like California and weather. It's just like I think when you get so used to sun every yeah. day, when you have rain for like not being able to drive and things make sense because they do not provide an infrastructure here that is safe to drive on. I got yeah the, the floods. It was a flood right, on the road. Right. But the actual depression piece I want to look into. No, I like When did I move to Seattle by the way? I'm not paying I'm paying California taxes, not Seattle taxes. Also, I pay taxes for the weather and the beach. I want some money back because of the great flood. That should be a deduction. I don't know what that means, but it should be. It's a write-off. It should be a write-off. 
The past three three days should be a write off. I think we should have our rent prorated because the weather was bad. Yeah, so many people's ceilings caved in. I'm gonna write a letter to my senator. You should. That weather was ho- horrible, and my shoes are wet. Do you know who the senator is? Hell. Senators. Of course. Senator. Well, I don't. Let's not give them any. Let's not give them any press on the podcast right now. <laughs> yeah. In case. Yeah. Guess the name of the senator. Oh. At least one, or the governor. Um, can even do the governor. The governor New, uh, Newsom. Yeah. yeah. Gavin Newsom, and Good the mayor job. of LA yeah. is Karen Bass. Oh wow, that's more than I knew. I don't know who a single senator is, or what they do. There's two of them. Do you know them? No. Oh, I do know that like California has. There was something weird with like we have the same amount of. Everyone has two senators. Yeah, now. But remember learning that in history when it was like no. There was a Let while me stop right there. No. That it well, it was, it was population based for a while, but it was like it wasn't fair. Well, like Rhode Island had but half a senator. That's House of Repo- <sighs> our House of Representatives are population based. Oh. Yeah. That makes sense though, because there's like more people, so we need more representation. Okay, my bad. Why didn't we make all the states the same size? That's what I'm confused about. How do we draw these lines? Oh my god, awesome question. Like, oh, time time zones can be very cut and dry, but like Oklahoma's a square for some reason, and California's kind of like a kind of sideways rectangle, hexagon type. Yeah, I think bitch. it's kind of just like you had to be there, kind of situation. You just had to be. You there. just had to be there. I wonder if we'll if you know, you know live. No, I mean, we won't. But, like, I wonder if there will ever be another state added to the U.S. I feel like there's, like, a large group of people in Texas that, like, want to secede. But it's also, like, not to alien. I don't know if any of them listen. If you're are all, if you're a fan of Texas seceding, don't listen to this. But it is, like, a group of the dumbest people ever. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, we still got our social security checks if we secede. It's like if you secede from the country that is providing you the social security checks, you probably won't. Right. Well, they those. wouldn't be an additional state. No, they. they I'm they saying it would be out. one less. Like right. I could see like. No, because there would still be some Texas. It's not like Texas is currently counting as two states. But there'd be like so it'd be like 49 instead of 50 is what I was saying. It wouldn't though because it, there would still be the part of Texas that wouldn't want to secede. I don't think they would split in half. Oh, I do. It's not like the north. I mean, the it's south. not going to happen. But I think. Yeah. I think they'd go half these. I guess we'll like, never know. Who are we? I don't, yeah. <laughs> hey guys, this show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Oh my gosh, I love talking about things when, when BetterHelp comes up because they're always like, you know, tell us about a relationship that you're really proud of, the one that you worked on, one that, one that you maintained. A lot of people don't know this, but me and Brooke used to just hate each other from the moment we met. We were at each other's <laughs> throats. Um, but a common misconception about relationships is that they have to be easy to right. be right. You know, but sometimes the best ones happen when both people put in the work to make them great. And therapy can be a great place to work through the challenges you face in all your relationships, whether with friends, work, or your significant other, or also anyone as well. (laughs) Therapy has given me the tools to navigate my relationship with myself and others, fostering resilience and a healthier mindset. It's a judgment-free space where I've learned to prioritize self-care, set boundaries, and build lasting positive changes. It's an investment in yourself that pays dividends in personal well-being and a more fulfilling life. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Become your own soulmate, whether you're looking for one or not. Visit BetterHelp.com slash BNC today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash B-A-N-D-C. I was going to say one of the greatest mysteries known to man that I have really like started to wrap my head around recently. Like there's, there's so many mysteries, you know, like the ocean, deep space and turning on your back windshield wipers. How do you even do it? I've I, never done I, it. I finally, like they came, I have never even had interest because I was like, let me not waste energy on something that I can't wrap my head around. Mm-hmm. But like they just turned on the other day automatically and I don't drive a nice car. And I was like, oh my God, cool. We're in business. Can't turn them off. Can't turn them off. They were on overnight. I was like, my car's going to be dead. You could always Google. I tried. But that's one of those things. Like Google has the answers. 
That's the thing. Like for your specific car. I'll just be like, how do I blank in a RAV4? And they can tell me. What is blank? How do you, how do you blank Anything in a RAV4? Anything I have a question about. For example, my car won't start. They'll let me know what I'm doing wrong. I just, I'll tell you something. And here's something that I don't even think Tesla has this. Hey Siri, turn on my back windshield wipers. Like everything is voice. Your phone. Oh. Wait, I love this. Watch. Hey Siri. Mm-hmm. What? I love like the little things. I didn't Siri, hear that. Because like, well, it's so quiet and like cute. Well, listen. Hey Siri. Uh huh. Aw, that is sweet. Uh -huh. I don't have Siri. You just turned it off. I think. She's pissing me off. She's pissing you off. Yeah. I don't know why. Because she's pissing me off. You can change her shrill voice. No, it wasn't her voice. She just kept coming to me when I didn't want to speak to her. Oh, I know. Yeah. Sometimes it'll be like a full sentence of me talking shit about someone and Siri has been listening and typing it out. Oh, and she's like, going to e-blast it out. Yeah. Yeah. Siri, I'm sorry. Who were you sending? No. Who are you, you going to? What was your plan there, Siri? Every single time I talk shit, I will always look at my phone. To see if it's somehow recorded and, and e blasted it out. I think via group SMS to whoever I was shit talking. There's there's two there's two solutions. One, stop talking shit. Can't. Or two, turn off Siri and you did that. I did that. Good yeah. job. Yeah, I gotta turn I you know what? I'm shit talking just means you care. Right. You wouldn't be shit talking if you didn't care. Yes, people there's there's something that was said about that. Shit talking. Hmm. Something about gossip being kind of low-key healthy. My therapist said it is because I was like, I'm worried about like being a bad person. Mm -hmm. And she said that it can be important to feel validated in your feelings by other people. Yeah. Yeah. For your own mental. Yeah. For your own mental. Like, sorry. I, sorry. I sorry. I put you under the bus, but my mental was at stake. Yeah. Yeah. I have mental. I have mental. <laughs> I was just going to ask, because I saw this this morning. Yeah. I saw, like, the Matt King's podcast with Zane and Heath and Mariah, and they were talking about hamsters hibernating and, like, how, like, growing up, a lot of people buried their hamsters because they they thought they were dead. But hamsters hibernate when it goes into colder months. Pet and hamsters? Pet hamsters. They're not dead, though, but they look dead. But they, like, and a lot of people have, like, assumed they've passed. Because hamsters, hamsters do just, like... All right, time to die. Everything I know about hibernation learned from that episode of SpongeBob with Sandy hibernating. Yeah. That is such a good episode. Incredible. It's a little bit loud. Like if you don't like noise, it's a little bit it's screamo music vibes. Uh -huh. um, but I always remember that sick guitar. Wow, 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 wow. When Sandy's like riding that bike down that ramp. I don't remember much. It was I should have said everything I remember and now forget about hibernation oh, right. I learned from that episode. But I was going to do uh, guinea, guinea pig? pigs hibernate? I think Frankie's just in a permanent state of hibernation. She's active, I feel like. she's She gets the zoomies for sure. But other than her, she's either doing zoomies or paralysis. Yeah. I love her. I love when I walk into my house and she is, she must have like just been in motion and she completely freezes like, She's been paralyzed by like a, like a greater creature, and I she, and she doesn't come unfrozen for for quite some time. It's so precious. That she's so cute. fun. She is fun. Yeah, she slept. She's in, like a little Pokemon. Yeah, she slept that. in my room last night. Oh, I love when she does that. That's so cute under my bed. Speaking of the Great Flood, I forgot to say this. The couch that I've been waiting and with bated breath for mm -hmm. was delivered during the Great Flood. I'm excited because I was able to bring it inside and unbox it all. Mm -hmm. And it is looking so cozy. The rest arrives today and in the puddle, probably, I assume, from the Great Flood, which will yeah. be something that I'll deal with later. But it's from Cozy, that company that I love. Right. And it looks so comfy. And I spent all night building that. And then and then a dre uh, what is a dresser that's not in your room called? It's not an armoire. I think it's, it's. I think it's. It's like waist height. I think it's still a dresser. 
And it's not a credenza because credenzas, I feel like, only go up to your knees and they're to like display a TV. If you put it in your room, it would fully be a dresser, you're saying? Yeah. It's a dresser. I think it's just a. Is it a chest it's of out drawers? Of oh, it could be a chest. But it. Anyways, it we're just my drawers. It's a it's cabinets though. Oh, but I know you kind of can't put these cabinets in a box, low key. What structure? It's 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 like a display thing that you have in your dining room. That like is it open? No, it has cabinets <laughs> with doors on them. Okay, and then I'll put things on like it'll. It, uh, you know what that is? I think that's just cabinets. Cabinets. Okay, yeah. it's a freestanding cabinet. Freestanding cabinets. cabinets. It's freestanding cabinets. Okay, okay so cool. your freestanding cabinets came? They came and I spent, like, I, I didn't task grab it. I was like, I want to do this, whatever. I built the entire thing. The last thing to do, put the put the doors on. And at this point, it's like 11 p.m. And I'm feeling very, pretty accomplished, you know? Yeah. Um, they sent me the wrong orientation of doors. <gasps> so, like, they're both, instead of both facing each other, which is they're supposed to close and face each other. So you open like this, there's two sets. They sent me like, mm -hmm. they're both, they're feet. wrong. Yeah. And it would be fine, but the hinges have like an imprint to put the hinges on. So imagine getting to the very end. There's only like eight more screws left to screw in the doors out of like a thousand screws. And I got there and I was just like, oh, I'm defeated. That happened to me, except for instead of like them sending me the wrong thing, I got too tired and I just never put the cabinet on, and I it was just a open floor plan. Do you want to see what it looks like without the cabinet? I'm just like it's it hurts me to know because the cabinets have like ripples in the in the doors, and it's like that's it's the accent that that's why I wanted the cabinet in the first place. Uh huh. So like to not put the doors on, uh -huh. I would be so sad. Well, put them on. Well, I'll show you what it looks like without them, and like here's what they look like. Yeah, they're pretty. They're cool. Yeah, you need them. I no one's gonna give a shit or a fuck about this, but. <laughs> I, like I just have to share because I, that's without them, and I'll put them. Yeah, back okay, on. you need them. I need them. Yeah. Did you contact customer support? I said you guys sent me the whole thing for me to return this item. No, I surely can't. they can just send you the additional piece that you need. I emailed this morning, but they should absolutely be able to do that. I hope they don't. They're not like no, no, no. Please let us provide you with a full new chest of drawers on us. I'm like, I don't want it. I just need the door. Yeah. I just need the door at this time. I'm I'm confident that they will just give you the door. I also really like your socks. Thanks. And I like the way that they go with your shoes. Thank you. Because I feel like you never do that like bright color on bright color mashup. I'm kind of getting out of my comfort zone a little bit because I, I very much like neutrals. Yeah, you do. I like that. Maybe I'm maybe I'm un maybe I'm unpussing now that the weather's nice. That could be cool. Maybe this has weather has completely undone something in you. I'm feeling chipper this morning. Really, I was, I'm uh, feeling like. I Actually, the Grim Reaper. Oh, I was like that yesterday in a big way. Yeah. For so many reasons. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, but this is kind of giving Amelia Bedelia over here. Oh, I miss her. Hi, guys. We want to take another break to thank a sponsor of today's episode, FitBod. No one warns you when you're growing up about the little adult decisions you have to make every day just to exist, like planning out your meals or endless household chores. I was literally thinking about this yesterday, like... We had no idea how lucky we were to be in high school and just simply oh, our job was to exist. Let's put a pin in and that. And all I did was complain. Let's let's put a, okay. let's come back to that. Oh, I want to be in a stroller. Okay. Yeah. You've got enough to think about. Now planning your workouts doesn't have to be <laughs> one of them. With FitBod, you just show up, open the app, and get to work on becoming your best self. Plus, it's even better than a personal trainer because it's cheaper. You can work out from home with no new equipment, and it's an easier way to build a personalized fitness plan that works for you. FitBod creates a personalized workout routine based on your goals, fitness level, and available equipment. It also adapts as you improve, so each workout will be challenging and push you to make progress. Get fine-tuned by experienced certified professional trainers to bring the, press, the best practices and exercise science to you. FitBod has made my workout routine so much easier because I don't have to think about what workout I need to do. I just open the app and have it ready for me. Plus, they have workouts that I can do either at the gym with equipment or at home with just my body weight. It's super flexible, and I'm excited to see the progress FitBod is going to help me with. With FitBod, you can learn new movements the right way with over a thousand demonstration videos. Show up and let FitBod handle the rest. Join FitBod today and get your personalized workout plan. Get 25% off your subscription or try the app for free at fitbod.me slash b and c. That's F-I-T-B-O-D 
dot M-E slash B-A-N-D-C. That just raises a great point. Did you have required reading in high school? Like in lit class? Yeah. If, yeah. Like English. Are there any schools that wouldn't have required reading in English? I don't, I don't know. No, I mean like, yeah, I don't know. What were your required readings? What did you have to read? Um, that's a good question. Scarlet Letter. Yeah. Of Mice and Men. Yeah. Um, what was Of Mice and Men about? Was Lenny. That Lenny. Okay, great. We're on the same page. Um, to Kill a Mockingbird. Okay, we read that in seventh grade, which is so stupid. I did not understand it then. That's what I'm saying. Why did they choose the books they chose for kids that are like learning about jerking off? Like, that, like my head is not like, oh, let me appreciate this art form. Right. And with, by the way, these, the giver, I'm going to kill myself. Oh like, my God, I didn't read that What one. is this book about? It is so sad. Yeah. It was like, that was like, I can't even remember what it was about, but I remember being like, I am actually depressed from reading this book and I have to go talk about it with my English teacher and, and entire class. Flowers for Algernon. Yeah. Seventh grade. Yeah. Oh my. What? And the boy with the striped pajamas. Why were what? all why were all the books sad? Can I ask? Like why wasn't there like a funny funny historic book? Like I get we Right. And what what was the historical importance of like Flowers for Algernon? Was I think just, there was probably more so like literary importance. I forget most of it. Yeah. But one, those should have been taught much later. And two, like why not teach kids like something they're excited about? Yeah. Like that kind of stuff when you're that young is not going to make you excited about reading. No, the that, majority of it. That was a kids. good point. But 13 years old is just like not the time to be like, let's sit down and really dive into. Like, I think it's very possible to teach books like The Hunger Games and <laughs> books yeah. that kids would be actually into. Yeah. In I think you're right, though. Like, classes. alliterations and what is it? Literary things. Devices and Devices such. are probably motifs, themes, motifs. et cetera. Yeah, but current books have that too. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think you can really, I don't know why it is that English teachers choose books that will not sit yeah. right with, yeah. with those age kids. I'm thinking like, like there's books like Animal Farm. I get like why that was straight up like, okay, tell us who each of these that more so animals like, represent. Let me read that in okay, history that. class. Yeah. Yeah. But that, I think that was like symbolism. I get like that one. Yeah. But again, like you could find that in uh. A Court of Thorns and Roses. <laughs> For sure. You knew that was coming. You could find that in Fourth Wing. Yeah, I don't know. What I, do the dragons represent, et cetera? What do they represent? I think they're actually just dragons. Okay. So the dragons are just doing dragons right now. Yeah. Right, ne right now. I did not read Iron Flame yet. So it's possible oh. that they could come to represent something entirely different in the sequel. Like, like lust, I'm assuming, for that book. Okay. Actually, now that you mentioned Lust X Dragons, I guess like a little bit of a spoiler if you didn't read Fourth Ring, which I just finished. There's this scene where, okay, so these two dragons are bonded together and they're having sex, surely, and then they're also bonded to two humans and then the humans are able to receive that horny energy from their dragons having sex and then they become so horny for each other via dragon osmosis and that's yeah, kind of like of the beginning of their courtship oh are you reading avatar no i told you i'm reading fourth wing oh i mean it's exactly the same as i always thought that it was a little bit he's just that in school yeah <laughs> like avatar i was thinking the same thing like when they plug their hair into their dragon and they're like con like connected i'm like are you oh you know i never watched avatar yeah, it's but fine. I would probably be into it now that I have a new lease on life. I'm a little bit confused about how Avatar was like as big of a deal as it was. I guess like the I graphics. Think the CGI. Okay. And he spent so long concepting it and coming up with the technology. I know, but we all spend a lot of time doing simple tasks. Like, <laughs> I spent like a lot. The thing of, is, that wasn't a simple task. I spent four. I'm, I've spent four years registering my car in California, and I haven't finished it yet. <laughs> I want an award when I do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? Oh. This is fantastic because it took you a long time. I think I haven't seen it, so I really can't contribute much. And I understand the passion that yeah. you're feeling. But like, I imagine that like it was really hard to do. Right. I guess I'm bitter because 
his last movie before that was Titanic. And like, how are you going to go from Titanic to Avatar? Titanic is yeah. unmatched. It's she always hard to follow a favorite movie, Connor. Of I have, course. I have so much empathy for you there. Of course. Yeah. <sighs> I feel like I need to correct something before we move on. I'm still watching The Bachelor. You guys don't know that I'm watching The Bachelor because I said it on the episode that comes out next week. Mm. Two weeks ago. Two weeks. Uh, okay, in two weeks, you'll find out that I started The Bachelor two weeks ago. From today. I have to start. Three weeks ago, actually. <laughs> so that's going to be so stupid. There is a girl that I called a little crazy who like I think is becoming a fan favorite so I just want to redact that even though I do think that she's crazy crazy people can be fan favorites no it's crazy does not equal well crazy you can be crazy and a great person I am winning my fantasy draft though my bachelor fantasy oh that's draft. exciting that would have been fun yeah fun to do got a good read good idea Joey's a sweetheart you gotta hop oh you gotta God, dive I know. in I hear I'd be addicted to him you gotta dive in I, but I've never been addicted to like a bachelor type man. He's he's funny because it's he's almost like AI the way he answers everything. Like it's like okay, Joey. I think we already talked. I said this exact thing last week or whenever we recorded two weeks ago. But he answers every question and it is like exactly the same amount nice to every person. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, that's not real. That's artificial intelligence. Mm. Maybe like he's I think he's a good guy. I think he was the first recipient of of Elon Musk's Neuralink. What is that again? I don't know. I don't have it what? yet. Now, someone got it, and I think like it's to communicate with devices via your brains. So you don't actually, which like Brooke, you and I are perfect for that because I don't want to. So I could scroll through my wanna, phone without touching it. Yeah. yeah. And I think eventually, like, link you could just up. see link your. Link me out. <laughs> link me up and out. I think you could eventually just like see your phone on your eyes. Okay. Listen. Listen to this, Connor. I think I'm going to invest in a Kindle. Yeah, you should. Even though I will also be getting the paperback to each book that I for your bookshelf access on my Kindle, just because I need to hold it and look at it and smell it. Yeah, I and also flip smelling. through the pages sometimes as well, kind of like a co co read. Because there's this thing where it's like it it's like <laughs> this: the mic stand attaches to your bed. Yeah, you put the Kindle in it. It hovers above your head, arms under your covers, remote. In your in your hand. Wow. Flip through the pages with your hands under your covers while you look up at the book, laying down, head on pillow. Let me one up you. They need to make glow it, in the dark. They need to make it for your t your tongue, so you can just go like this, like to scroll. Next page. <laughs> That's like that game, like Mafia, like. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Next page. But for your Kindle. <laughs> My Kindle knows. Blinking. Oh, I guess you blink. Like imagine it's blinking and you have to keep your eyes open, like drying out <laughs> until you, until you need to turn to the next page. Like the funniest thing about the Neuralink thing, about it being like, like fo your screen is just going to be like on your eyes is you could, I want to get it first. So everyone thinks like, wow, it's so cool that he goes to lunch by himself and like doesn't even bring his phone. I mean, while I'm watching Netflix while I'm eating, <laughs> like drooling. Yeah, no. I'm watching The Bachelor yeah. at Chipotle. That's like Black Mirror full blown yeah and it, the thing is it's gonna happen i know and it's it's that hard thing where like when when you hear your parents talk about something that's like totally normal yeah. like tiktok to us it's like they're like we 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 didn't download tiktok we turned off siri so that she can't listen to us right. anymore we do this we do that and it's like tiktok is fine also like if tiktok decides to take over the world you not having it on your phone is stopping nothing right so but like, and then I hear about the Neuralink and like Elon putting it in someone's brain. I'm like, ah, these, these kids are It's inevitable crazy. that like, you become your parents. It's inevitable. Like we were just talking about that, how you, like when you were little and your parents would be like, try in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. Like, yes, that was excruciating as a child when your parents did that. Cause it's like, I can't I don't make it pee. come out. I don't have to pee. You will 1000% be doing that to your children. By the way, that's what I say to myself before I get in bed. Just go, go try. Just try. Just go try. Go try now you understand the importance of just try. Have to just try sometimes. You just have to sometimes. Oh, and like in life I, and in the restroom. Before I get in the car, I'm like, you know, you like push a little bit. Yeah. And you're like, what about in an hour? Like when if I'm still in the car, like you could, you should just squirt a little bit now, and then you buy yourself like 20 minutes in the car. You know, there was a year when my anxiety was so bad, and I was scared. Like I would have to go to the bathroom, like more so from a poop perspective <laughs> when I was in the car Shit. and like not able to access it that I didn't get in a car for like a year. 
no joke. Or I was scared. I was, it was right after the throw up incident in the car. I was scared I was going to throw up or shit my pants. Did not get in the car. Wow. And if I did get in the car, it was very short distances. And I knew every single bathroom in any public place right around well, me. That's Crazy. And I fear I'm entering back into that space. Like about not being able to. About about not being able to. Oh yeah. You got you had to get out of an Uber to throw up. I, like, I hate when something happens where you. That's a situation where I always tell myself in an Uber if I'm feeling sick, I'm like, okay, like you haven't thrown up in an Uber before, like you're gonna be fine. It's fine. It's fine. Now I can't say that to myself. So now I'm gonna think it's gonna happen again every mm-hmm. time I get an Uber. What happened? Did I miss oh, the story? This, no, I didn't tell anyone. That would that would be helpful information, Ryan. You're right. Context is so key. Hello, y'all. We wanted to take another quick break to thank a sponsor of today's episode, Mint Mobile. One of the most stressful things about a new marriage is figuring out how to combine two entire lives into one. Uh, yeah. Seriously, like, whose bank do we go with? Who has better insurance? Your sofa or mine? The one thing I found that Brooke and I were both more than happy to combine was our wireless plan with Mint Mobile. Right now, Mint Mobile has phone plans starting at $15 a month. That's unlimited talk, text, and data Data or data? Whatever. Either. What a, that's one thing we have to figure out yeah. together as well. For $15 a month. For anyone who hates their phone bill, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for 15 bucks a month. All plans come with unlimited talk and text and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Our producer, Izzy, made the switch to Mint Mobile, and she said her service has been so much better than her other carrier. Plus, she's saving $45 using Mint Mobile versus her old carrier. <coughs> that's a crazy deal for real choose from three six or 12 month plans and say goodbye to a monthly phone bill mint mobile gives you the best rate whether you're buying from for one or a family and at mint families start at two lines use your own phone with any mint mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts switch to mint mobile and get your first three months of premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month to get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash bnc. That's mintmobile.com slash bnc. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash bnc. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. I wasn't even, I wasn't drunk. Mm. I had had a cocktail with my dinner and the problem was the dinner being crab pasta. Oh, Pork belly, Ew, Brussels sprouts, um, and truffle fry. Oh, the perfect storm. And By the way, take a bite of that exact, almost that exact meal in this bowl. And right then here. I just like sipped on a drink with dinner and it just like wasn't, it didn't work. You know, like I wasn't drunk oh, at all. It sounds like what you would put into like a did, witch's yeah, cauldron. It didn't work. So I said, you know what? Like I'm just like not feeling like up for a night out. And I got in the Uber and for the first time, I said, excuse me, sir, c- could you pull over? And truly spent 15 minutes. I cannot believe he waited for me. <laughs> yarfing up my guts. Like in a very crowded, high traffic area. Ugh. And now I'm scared. It's, now I'm just like terrified it's going to happen again. And now I can't stop thinking about that. Ew. Well, yeah. you could bring your old trash can you used to have I in kn- elementary I, school I'm with you. literally... Inches away from starting to carry around my bucket again. You could also get like a, what did they say on succession? Like egregiously large bag. Yeah. You could just get that in one slot could be for Vom. Mm, Connor, yeah. That's true. Also those things we had on that zero gravity plane excursion, those had like a diaper device yeah. inside the bag that immediately just like soaked everything up and then sealed it off. It was phenomenal. I peed in one. Yeah. Yeah. Because now my fear of throwing up is less about like throwing up and more so about the circumstance. Like I need to be completely isolated and safe if it's going to happen. Like, yeah, that's. And that keeps not happening to me. I get that. Yeah. Sorry. It's okay. It's just like tough. It's been tough to recover. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm like that too with. So I've never been seasick. Mm -hmm. My dad is unbelievably seasick, but he pushes through like anytime we're on a trip or something and he's like i'm not gonna not go whale watching or whatever so he comes but i see it on his Uh, face he turns white and he doesn't tell anyone but i'm like wow it's crazy that no one else in my family has it. how do i not have it and then all of a sudden i'm like do i have it oh my gosh i could actually throw up if i push a little uh bit and i'm really scared like i'll eventually end up getting that the way i've developed fear of heights 
which by the way, I talked about the plane excursion that much, like I mentioned it, and it's making me fucking sick. What plane excursion? The up and down, the gra- no gravity. Yeah, I'm actually like, I'm feeling completely sick by this conversation. Oh, me too. Let's move yeah. on. How was your weekend? Um, Besides just like being depressed. Yeah. We went to the Grammys. Yeah. Should we, we jump right into the let's, Grammys? Let's, use it, let's jump right into the Grammys. Oh, cool. Okay, go ahead. How about you jump right into it? Um, I don't have like a ton to say. I it was, was still, it was torrential pouring rain. Yeah. Izzy Bug came with us to the Grammys and um, we went with MasterCard. Yes, which thank, so you MasterCard. thank you MasterCard. MasterCard. I guess we could talk, you know what we could talk it was, about? It was a unique experience. Let's provide, there's a reason we went there. It's to provide some cool insights to the Grammys. Yeah. So like, I always have this thought when I see influencers at things like the Grammys, I'm like, why the hell are they there? You know, and now I've realized uh-huh. our purpose for being there is to provide our perspective on the Grammys. Yeah. So, and of, of Although course, I I'm don't like, feel like the Grammys like needs PR. No, but it's like fun to hear. Yeah, it is. But I'm so like, I always have that thought, like, why the hell are they on the red carpet of the Grammys until I get an invite? Now it makes sense. Mm-hmm. Well, I we mean, weren't I, invited to the carpet. I absolutely needed to be there. Well, we were invited to walk. We were invited to carpet B where carpet. there were no photos allowed. And it was in a, in a like tunnel behind carpet, carpet we were, A. It was, it was, it was adjacent to the carpet. So we could like. They said that we could look through to carpet A if we want. And we did. <laughs> and we did. We did. But we couldn't stop for too long. No, they did keep us moving. Yeah. In a way that yeah. was very fast. I didn't get any pictures that night. That's why, like, Izzy was so gracious. Like, I was just like, please, I need photos. I need photos. Because I, I, that's happened before. Where it's like, okay, I got this whole outfit for the, like, I have to take a picture of my mm-hmm. outfit. So did that. We went through to the the event. That was actually, which is so weird. Because it was the Grammys, it was shocking to me. We're in such less high stakes situations seeing such, like, a higher volume of famous people than we did at the Grammys. It was crazy. Like, I didn't really, I didn't like interact with anybody of like, oh yeah, it's A-list. nice to be in a room with those kinds of people and know that it's just like, I do not have to worry about like encountering. Yeah. No, there was actually like, no one else yeah. of, it was cool. It was like nice and relaxing and that's how it should be. Famous people should be in like a different room than mm-hmm. us. But so we go sit down. It was phenomenal. I got to see, well, we all got to see. Well, first off, I was shocked. It was in like a hockey arena. Yeah. Crypto.com arena. Yeah. It was like, we're where people play hockey. Like I was expecting it to be in like a formal, formal hall. <laughs> the hockey arena. The classic Is hockey, hockey arena. arena not a name? Well, I mean the Lakers play there. It's, it was originally. The Lakers st- also play there. Staples Center. It's the Staples Center. Um, I was expecting it to be in like a gorgeous like ballroom hall. It was doing full on ice rink. I guess I didn't think about that either. Yeah. It is. It's an arena. But and you're in the huge. stands. It was crazy. Even from a distance, I don't like feel this way like a ton, but seeing like a Miley Cyrus, a Meryl Streep, a Jay-Z, um, like Doja Cat, Oprah, and we're just sitting there, I'm like, this is so weird. It felt like I was like at the Hunger Games. Something that I thought was really weird was that like the crowd was very like loud and obnoxious while people were presenting and receiving their awards, but like you would have no idea when watching the Grammys. No. Like, oh. it doesn't pick up on any of that sound. Oh, yeah. Like, when Billie Eilish was singing her song, there was clamoring. People I don't even know how to describe it. People would not shut up. And like, it was, wow, I was so shocked. It sounded like they were playing it on purpose, but it was for everybody when they were talking. I could hear it because it's an arena. So there's still, you don't you don't have to be seated the whole time. How you can leave. How do they leave. cancel all that sound out? Tech. Knowledge. But it's live. It's going through the filter I, live? They must have sound reduction or something. It'd I have no like idea. If I'm talking right now, you won't be able to hear me through your microphone, but you could hear it through this microphone. Oh, I've been meaning to ask. You know how we used to have headphones? Yeah. Why? Like, what does that do? So you can hear yourself. But I can hear myself right now. Yeah, but if you have your headphones on, when you're starting a podcast, you'll know when the mic is getting away from your yeah. mouth. Oh, uh, yeah. That's important to know for me. Yeah. yeah. Um... Like, I'm outspokenly not, like, a fan of, honestly, any late-night show host. Trevor Noah is... You're very outspokenly a huge fan of Seth Meyers. Besides Seth Meyers, I yeah. was going to add that. But um, Trevor Noah is on that list. He was very pleasant. I was, like, he was good. I laughed a couple times. He was, like, 
absolutely stayed on track. Mm-hmm. There was no like weird like s- statements he wanted to did make about job. anything. He yeah. came in, he did what he had to do, yeah, and he then did. he checked out. It was yeah. perfect. I thought yeah. it was really classy and yeah. well done. Classy, yeah. sophistication. Miley Cyrus was fucking She's great. She's a god. That was phenomenal. Um, I And she, like, she was so right when she was, like, this crowd, she basically was, like, hello at one point because, like, no one was standing up, no one was singing. Like, it was a weird crowd, it for was, sure. It was weird because for some people, the crowd, even, like, the A-listers down there were up and standing and dancing and stuff. And then for her, randomly, everyone sat. And like she was like, you know this song, it's right? The most popular song, right? It's catchy. Everyone knows the words, even if you're not like a fan, you know the words. Be for real. She yeah. she literally said, "Be so serious right yeah. now." She was, you know, this song. And then people were kind of like, "Oh, she got us out of our shell." To be honest, like I can understand the sitting and like watching because she was performing so well that I was I was mesmerized. I think it's hard to do, like that song requires like energy, so I'm sure it was like hard to feed off of the crowds like non-verbal sitting energy Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now when she accepted her award and she pulled out her purse i go here we go what the hell did you see when she pulled out her purse no i didn't in my glasses oh my gosh she pulls out her purse like in the middle of everything and it's almost like i'm like oh what is she gonna do that's gonna like mess this up then she just puts her purse back where it was. I think she like decided against whatever she was. But I was like, here we go. Oh, I missed it. Because she's pulled a joint out before and lit it at like the MTV Awards. I love that woman. Me too. Not a word to say about her. The, at the end when she's like, thank you to my mom. Thank you to this person, this person, your fiance, like her producer's mm-hmm. fiance, your wife, her other sound guy. And she goes, I did not forget anyone. She didn't mention her dad or her sister. She mentioned her mom. I didn't realize her and Noah were on the outs, too. Yeah. Well, Noah took her dad's side. Yeah. That all sucks. Hey, guys. We want to take a break to thank a sponsor of today's episode, Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Whether you're just starting out or managing a growing brand, Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything from products to content to time, all in one place, all on your terms. Get started with one of our professional website templates with designs for every category and use case. Then customize your look, update your content, and add features to fit your unique needs. You can make any Squarespace template do whatever you want so your idea, brand, or business stands out online on every device. They also make selling your products online a breeze. Whether you sell physical, digital, or service products, Squarespace has the tools you need to start selling online. Upload, organize, and access all your content from one place. With the new asset library, you're able to manage all your files from one central hub and use them across the Squarespace platform. Plus, host video content, organize your video library, and showcase your content on beautiful video pages, and sell access to your videos with member areas. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash B and C to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash B and C to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Um, I also like... The best part for me. She forgot underwear, though. She was able to share. Oh, where was I? That was her whole speech. Okay. I, like, I don't know <laughs> where I was, but I think the best part of the night was Fast Car. Oh, Brooke, beyond. How did I, for, how did I skip yeah. right past that? I was moved to tears to for tears. a second. I was, we were singing. I posted that TikTok of like Taylor Swift and everyone's like, why is no one else standing? It's like, because they were in awe, I assume. Yeah, it was. An incredible thing in general and to be in the room, a gift. I also like that she hasn't, like Tracy Chapman hasn't been seen in Mm -hmm. 20 plus years in public at all. So I think that there was like, like we knew that she was going to come out, but there was like a delay in the audience. Like, is that Tracy Chapman? And then it was just like uproarious, like, oh, she has God in her face. In her veins. And like the song, if I were to hear that song in another language, I think it you would, would understand still, it. You would understand I think I would it. get it. Yeah. Like Spanish, Chinese, anything. I would literally be like, that well is said. God. That song is an essence. It's an essence. Yeah. And I think like her and Luke Comb together, the way that he was like. I have comb. <laughs> I have comb. 
Did I say her and Comb together? You said her and Luke Comb. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, Comb. He has Comb. And so so Chapman and Comb together were able to like, he just highlighted her. like, And I feel like he has a voice I could like take it and run mm-hmm. with. But he kind of was like, this is yeah. your song. Yes. Get your flowers. Yeah. Yeah. That was incredible. Also. Also. Sorry, I'm going to keep going on that. It was long. Like, they didn't just do, like, the verse that everyone knew. They did, like, the song and then some, I feel like. Mate, oh, I thought it was kind of just, like, I'm having a spiritual experience and that's why it feels long. But they did they, an extent, the extended version? It felt so. I could be wrong. I could have had the same experience. Oh God, I didn't realize we got bonus content. But, like, Miley extended her song. I Sometimes I feel like I'm not experiencing the same things as other people. What was that? Did that pick up? There was just an insane noise. If if you guys didn't clap hear twice, that. if you're here to kill us. Um, but I'm not like remembering the things that you're talking about. I think yeah. I'm just not observant. Um. What else? What else was good? Um. What else was good is that we knew that there was somebody that was going to make a special appearance. That has not been seen for quite some time. Yes. And we were wondering, oh, who's it going to be? <clears throat> and Connor said, oh, my God, what if it's Celine Dion? And I said, no, it's not going to be Celine. Like, she's not doing public appearances right now. Enter Celine. <laughs> oh, my God. And everyone probably saw, like, the story and everything. It was, that was, cr- I was crazy laughing because I was like, there's no way. She is a goddess. You know who walked her out? That man that walked her out is her eldest son. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh Uh-huh. Arm in arm. Well, I was so glad to see her, truly. And she also didn't make it about herself. Like, here I am. I just had this battle with this disease. And I'm She's still going through it. Yeah. Well, I didn't didn't know she was able to, like, walk. Yeah. But here she is. And she was powerful. Yeah, she She took the room. Everyone was going crazy for Celine. Um, Here's one thing that threw me off. Can we be released from the grasp of you two and whatever contract they signed. They weren't even there. We watched like a five minute video of you two performing at the freaking sphere in Vegas. Stop with you two. They must have a contract with like, with like God? the government. <laughs> what? I don't even like, like, like that's the first time I'm like, stop pushing your agenda. You two. Yeah. Stop pushing the you two agenda yeah, on us. A hundred percent. Like no one's no, where is the U2 community begging for this? I, I don't know them. I haven't seen them. Do they exist? I don't think so. Also, also go see U2 if you want to see U2. The rest of us are okay. They didn't even, they weren't even there. Like that was an actual effort made by a higher power that was like, we're also going to put U2 not only on your iPhones, mm-hmm. but we're going to put it on like. Deal with the government. Yeah, we're going to put it. In front of all of your faces here and globally. Yeah. At the Grammys. Actually, I think I do like a, one song by them. Yeah, yeah. There's that one that's kind of a hit. Which one are you thinking of? Dun, dun, maybe dun, I'm not dun, thinking of. Maybe that? it's not you two. With, uh, without, without you. Is that you two? Yeah. And oh, damn. It's great a song. beautiful day. But again. I only know with without. I, I like these songs. Because <laughs> I didn't seek. Every song I know by you two has been against my will. I don't even. I've never like typed in. With or without you. I actually have. Whoa. I actually love that song and you too. Okay. Yeah. It's like an incredible piece of song of, of music. Um, sometimes one song is all it takes to make you like a band. Sometimes one touch is all it takes. It was great seeing Dua. Yeah. She one it, kiss is all it takes or one touch? One kiss. kiss. But touch for you guys. One touch is Isn't all it takes. One touch is all. One oh, kiss one is kiss? all it takes. But we titled an episode "One Touch." Uh, is touch. Yeah. Yeah. Do a. Uh, That's another got it. Socks in. I, I, th- I need to stop like idolizing celebrities to the point of god status, but it's hard not to when you see them in person and you're like, oh, yes, you look like that. Yeah. And the it's it's the energy and the essence. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. Doja Cap. Brought her areola, her areolas to the red carpet. That was special. Yeah. Um, and Jay Z came up and made a speech and was like, "By the way, my this person, there's someone here who has the most Grammys ever, but has never won album of the year for oh, Grammy." And then I didn't hear him, of course. And then everyone gasped, and I was like, "What?" <laughs> no. Well, I turned around too because I think you and I were talking or something. Like me, you and Izzy were talking, and I had to ask the person behind me. He was like, "What do you say?" 
He's talking about Beyonce. I was like, okay, sorry. I will say, like, watching that on the TV, I would have gotten, like, much better visual access as well as audio access, yeah. as well as access to literally everything. But it was nice to be in the room. Oh, it was phenomenal. That was so much fun. Yeah. Um, I had a, I had a great time. Yeah. Now we know... Because of the rain, like everyone was saying there was no coverage of the carpet. There was a, It's because half of the people, like the A-listers in the room, couldn't get to the carpet because it was raining so damn hard. It was. It was the funniest thing in the world so was watching every all of these like rich A-listers. There's probably some executives. There's some music people in trash bags running across the street. Just like the wind is barreling these trash bags back. They look, it looks like they're all a bunch of wet tumbleweeds. It was hysterical. There's also someone that was super famous that our Uber driver had driven because she was like, there was a woman in a huge white feathery poofy dress that like was like sitting down on her and she was soaking wet. And I saw a picture of her on the carpet, like on the actual carpet. Wait, you saw her in our Uber? He was telling me about her and I was like, oh, I saw that girl like walking the red carpet. So the Grammys were great. We got soaking wet and like after we were soaked, we were like, we're just not going to go to the after party. But that was good, honestly, because it was late. And And I was a little relieved I didn't get any pictures of myself just because we found out a few days before that we were going and i was hating my dress and also everything about your dress are great no i didn't it was too tight and i had eaten about oh the best part of the grammys was this mac and cheese i had and it but it wasn't sitting right in my dress so i was glad that there were no pictures personally for me well now we know to get pictures like everywhere we go in case we don't in case we were only given access to carpet b damn i wish you had had that mac and cheese so bad we were literally being escorted via like underground tunnel, <laughs> like from, like so that no one would see the uglies. They'd also be like, you can take pictures at the end. We get to the end. Yes, no, you are not allowed no, to. Take no, I thought I was gonna get my ass beat by one of the people on the yeah. carpet. They're like, get out of here. I was like, okay. Yeah. Um, where, where do you want to go next, Connor? There's a few different ways we could go. I want to tell a funny story, but are you gonna get mad at me if I talk about it? No, I'm not gonna get mad at you. Okay. But I'm. It might be too soon. Why? I don't. I don't know. I got clarity on it, by the way. Okay. Okay. So, so yesterday, Brooke and I were invited to the the house plant event for the launch of their new like coffee product, and it was house plant is house plant is Seth Rogen's company. The his like like for a for a very cool casual like smoker weed smoker or professional weed smoker depending on what your level of weed smoking is it's cool products and things um it was very like curated boutique cool event and we go obviously seth is there rolling joints it was very cool oh yeah there's their coffee that they have i had one it was phenomenal um i was not gonna go because i had to go have dinner with my my mimi yesterday but i was like uh i should go because this is really cool like i love seth rogan all this stuff on the invite it said like you can like he's happy to do content with people, no long form video, long form or scripted video, which is like no audio sounds where you like tell him to like lip sync with an audio type thing. And I was like, okay, I was going to order a coffee and Seth Rogen is right there and he's, he's by himself. So I'm like, I'm going to get my content right now. And then I, cause I'm going to, I have to leave. So I took advantage of the time that I had. I saw a moment and I was like, let me just do it. Like I'm here. I'm a content creator. I'm obviously like Seth Rogen would doesn't want to just hang out with me. Like I'm here to make content for his company, for the brand. And so I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this. Brooke, will you film this thing? And I'm like, okay, let's. Mm -mm, I I am across the room. Oh yeah. Completely across the room. Keep in mind. Seth Rogen is one of my comedy icons. Super bad is my favorite movie. I was like gearing up kind of, I wanted to say something to him. And I was like in my head, I was like, okay, maybe just tell him like super bad is your favorite movie and say nice to meet you and introduce yourself and call it a day, like something short and sweet. And so then Connor waves me over and I see him talking to Seth and I was like, oh my God, Connor's going to introduce me. Like, yeah, I can't wait to like have this wholesome moment with Seth. Puts Con- Connor puts his phone in my hand and says, okay, can you film this? Okay, wait. No, that's what happened. No, I know, I know. But wait, so I'm talking to Seth for a second, like. I'm like prefacing this. I'm like, oh, we have a podcast. I like never laugh though. And like, I want your laugh so bad because like it would be so good to have a podcast with a podcast laugh. And he's like, he's laughing. I think he's just being cordial, obviously. But 
I'm like, could we do a quick video together? And he's like, yeah, totally. Like, yeah, for sure. And I was like, cause I like want to do this trend where everyone know. I don't know if everyone knows this trend. Cause I always forget that like other people have different FYPs, but I'm like, there's this trend where five people or something get in a room and someone sings and they're all mouthing the words and you guess who's singing. And I was like, we should do like a guess who's laughing and I'll like, you'll laugh. And then I, I'll open my mouth and it'll obviously be you kind of dumb. But I was like, I didn't have a premeditated idea for content and I have to leave and I have him here. I'm just going to do this very quickly. So I, I do wave Brooke over and I'm like, can you film this really quick? And I've already explained it. And I, she, Brooke starts filming and I go, okay, Guess which one of us is laughing? One, two, three. Complete silence. He did not get And then the... I was also like, this is the worst moment. This is this is worse. This is horrible. So I get in the Uber on the way home, excited to Uber home, and uh I look at the video, 15 second video, just on my face. I literally I c I wouldn't Seth Rogen I could is not, not in the that. video. I couldn't. Like I couldn't do that to him. Well, I'm sorry that He was he was really nice, but that was a bit of a painful experience for, for me. I'm feeling sick as well, especially now because I cannot get any clarity out of that. But it is what it is. It's not like we would have ended up it is what it is, spending the night sure. on his couch. No, I didn't think that's where it was going to go. Well, I'm sorry. I put you in an uncomfortable position. No, that's position. okay, Connor. I appreciate it. And, and I don't think he will recognize me ever. No, he won't. That, which is comforting. He won't recognize me. Mm-mm. You're well, pretty recognizable. Well, great. Then he, re well, then Seth R Rogen recognizes me. That's a way to I look at it. What, for sure. Yeah, I'm yeah. being positive. Good. Good. You gotta, you gotta see the bright side of everything. And you know that's not my thing. I know, but is I the, hope is that the bright side. I hope that I can provide a little positivity because it's all gonna be okay. And it was like interesting because I was thinking about like when I tell this story in therapy, like if you're like a fly on the wall in my therapy session, like that is like ridiculous. Me being like, I think Seth Rogen hates me. Like, it is. From it an is. outside. For me to be like, I know he's not going to remember me because of how many pictures I take with people or like videos or whatever. Immediately, it's like, I need to, I need to have a beer or like I need food or what am I doing after this? Like I need to ride home. Like I'm not thinking like all day. Wow, that fucking little twerp at my event that asked me to laugh. Blacklisted. Mm. I will say I had one negative fan interaction. That you um, will never forget where about. Where someone came up to me and put their phone in my face. Mm. I remember that. And it really like has stayed with me. I have not forgotten it, but I don't know. I don't know what they look like. Yeah. The only negative one I've ever had was, or actually, and this is like a c consistent one, like a theme. I don't know who you are, but all my friends like you. Like, can we take a video together? I'm like, that's always. Sweet, or like, yeah. I don't, I don't even know who you are. I've never seen any of your stuff. I was like, that's, I wouldn't expect you to. That's totally fine. I'm not, I'm not. Timothy Chalamet. Yeah. Um, shoot, I was going to say something else. Come on. I don't have it. So was it Seth related? No. Like my Wi-Fi password is about Seth. What is it? Well, I'm not going to tell. I, oh, I guess I could. You wouldn't get it. It's a super bad reference. What is it? I've seen you read several times. Well, it's just. Oh. Was it's that just your like that one random cafeteria scene where like I'm not gonna sit alone like I'm fucking Steven Glansberg. I don't know why that really stuck with me all these years after seeing Super Bad, and I couldn't think of anything to make my Wi-Fi password. No, I think the network is is just. I think that it. I my Wi-Fi network is. See if it and the password is. If just it, bleep it out. No, just bleep it, it and. I also don't mouth. care if people get onto my Wi-Fi network. Well, then they can like access your shit. Um, really? I think if it, if it would have been Jonah Hill, he would have remembered us. He probably, like, I could see him keeping a diary of, like, people he hates. I could see that, too. But also, I would care less about that just due to where he's gone in life. Yeah. Oh, wait. Oh, this is what I was going to say. So, like, after I did that there, after I was, like, so horribly able to, to create some content, which is definitely not my job, I was thinking like oh my god all the employees are looking at me like they're probably like gonna come up and kick me out and there's this one tall dude that like had a house plant sweater on and i was like oh my god i need to leave like before i'm asked to leave and i call someone who's a mutual with like the house plant team and i'm like blah blah, blah. she's like that is the person that invited you he's a fan he wanted to talk 
Like I promise. You. Oh, were you I, avoiding him? Well, I no, I was just like I could see him looking at me when I was like on my way out waiting for my Uber, and I was like I should just like walk outside and like, but I I could I think I was like second hand high from the weed that was being smoked, and all I got was the paranoia. Maybe that's just anxiety. Yeah, yeah it, that's it, a good point. It was anxiety. Maybe it was just anxiety. But it was really cool. Yeah, it was really cool. And the coffee is actually so good. Yeah. Did you take it home? You you put it in your yeah, freezer, my freezer. And then you melt it it's and like then an you put cube. it in to your coffee. And it's delicious. Anyway, let's go to the bonus. Wait, I really quick want to talk about curb before we go. Oh, okay. Also, this is also reminding me that you know the CeraVe ads that we keep seeing freaking everywhere? Mm-hmm. That's their Super Bowl campaign. I f- really feel like I got Oh. I feel like I feel like I got the wool pulled over my eyes why i don't know i just seen a million of those and then i started having dreams about michael Sarah, and now it's the lucky Super Bowl campaign i feel like i was like kind of a part of it but the curb you watched curb yes thoughts i one of my favorite shows so in love with larry david went to the latte larry's pop-up last weekend it was exquisite i think they should have ended a few seasons ago yes and that's natural yeah. But I think when you like have a show that's this successful, it's like, why would we stop? They're making right. so much money. It is kind of just like the same thing. When, Each episode is the same formula over and over. Yeah. When you start to see the template of yeah. Kerber Enthusiasm, you're like, oh. Yeah. Where, whereas like a Seinfeld, it's kind of like, oh, I didn't. Whoa. But I will say what I personally loved about the episode of Curb was one of the main like Larry uncomfortable bits was that he called someone named Brooke Brookie when he wasn't at Brookie level with her. So she was like, oh, just call me Brooke. But some people had Brookie access and some people only had Brooke access, Larry being one of them. And that was just one of the main running bits. And Larry was saying Brooke and Brookie over and over and over again. That is my favorite thing when a celebrity or when a character that I love says my name. It's like a drug to me. Yeah, I get that. It's like chilling. Yeah, it's like hearing him say that over and over. (laughs) Euphoric. You should make that your ringtone. Like there was a victim once on Criminal Minds named Brooke. Best episode of best episode. Don't remember what it's about. Just remember may, Dr. May, Spencer Reed saying Brooke. Drug. May she rest. She she made it. She was a victim. Oh wait. You can be a, a victim and live, live to tell the tale. <laughs> I forgot you just don't like die if you're a victim. Yeah. Oh uh, well, may she yeah, she's may she rocker. thrive. Yeah. Um, I couldn't help but notice. If you're like an OG listener, you probably remember the days when I used to not wear underwear. Mm-hmm. And uh, I used to keep my phone like, for some reason, like in my crotch. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I was doing that. But I always used to do this thing, nut dial. Where like I always used to nut dial people because there's no else to say it. Like the heat from my balls was like tapping my phone. Oh, I didn't realize it was the heat. I think it's like that's how, that's the haptics. Oh, I thought it was act- the actual just ball to phone contact. Well, no, because my balls weren't out. They were in my pants. Well, I thought it was your... P- Pants over your balls making the contact. No, because like my knee doesn't work. Oh. Oh, I didn't realize it was the ball heat. It's the heat from my balls. Mm. My undercarriage. Mm. And so like I did this. We did. We clipped something with the nut dialing clip. And then they did. Leon did a dick dialing. Yeah. And it was. That's for sure. Parallel thinking. It's parallel thinking. But it's like very interesting. They did a brookie and a nut dialing. Yeah, that is cool. In the that's first episode, m- that's more back. of like a manifestation. I thought it was crazy yeah. how um, they just really just picked up from the literal last episode, and it was I was like, Maria Sophia is like still here. Yeah, she was funny though. Oh, I like I'm really over that part of the story. Mm-hmm. Um, I have to pee show back. Okay. I'm actually like doing the the uh, well, this thing. Let's go to bonus. Okay, we'll see you guys in bonus. Okay, this week on Close Friends. To use equal parts olive oil and acid. Acid? acid? Like Look I got Drake dick penis. Cock and balls. Drake has the most small penis energy no- I've seen from a dude with an elephant trunk. It actually makes no sense. What? You saw his penis? Is that real? Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, I saw it. Yeah. Yeah. Any How's note? your mom? Sign up on tmgstudios.tv to watch the full bonus episode.